All right, so we're back looking again at my backup and you can see that I actually ran the scheduled backup as I was going to. Remember I ran a one-time backup here and then I ran a scheduled backup. And I'm just gonna note here, if I wanna recover a file that's on the backup, I click this recover option. And from here, I can pick like where the file was. So I have some backups here. I can pick the time of the backup I want. If I want an older version, I can find the files I need. I can browse to them if it wants to do this for me. There's my C clone. I don't know. For example, I remember I had that shared thing. I don't know, maybe one of my users accidentally deleted one of these files and I want to recover it. We'll just do like something like this and just pretend like we're going to do it. I can recover it to the original location or do it to another location. And I'll just hit next. By the way, here, if you have a duplicate, so if they deleted it, um, you would typically do something. You usually do this, do not recover items. Sometimes you, you wouldn't really want to override it. Copies is fine though. So I'm just going to go next. I'm not actually going to do this. So I'm just going to hit cancel right now, but that's where you do recover. What I'm actually going to do now is um, let's pretend that we actually had a natural disaster and we need to restore this computer from the backup. So I'm actually just going to shut this down. So this computer is now lost. I'm going to shut it down. And I'm going to just basically start over from scratch with a new server. So let's wait for just a second to get this shut down. I'll note here, when you're on a VM, I'm going to attach the backup disk because I'm going to pretend like that's the disk we have, right? And I'm going to attach it to a different computer. If you're in VMs and you attach the same disk to two VMs, it causes all sorts of problems. So be very careful that before you try to do a complete like restore here, or recovery, we're going to call it recovery, restore, that the other server is down, okay? I'm not gonna delete this yet, but we are gonna delete it in a minute. So I got Windows Server here. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna pretend Windows Server is now gone. In fact, I am feeling awesome here. I'm actually just gonna delete this, because I, well, no, we'll just wait. We're all nervous about this. I'm gonna do a new virtual machine. My new virtual machine needs to be configured for Windows. I'm going to call this one Recovered Server, and I'm going to hit Next. I'm going to hit Gen 2. This is just the same as I set up the original. It's at a Gen 2. Startup memory here, I was using 2048. I'm going to hit Next. The connection was to LAN switch. I'm going to hit Next. There's my recovered server. I still want to do the 32 gig hard disk. I'm going to hit next. This will create a new virtual disk, by the way. So I'm pretending again that I have a brand new server with its own hard disk in it that I'm going to use and I'm going to recover from the backup. So I hit next here. Install an operating system from that bootable image file. I still have my Windows Server Data Center ISO in there and I hit that one. So that's going to be the one I use. Now I hit next and I'm ready to go. Well, not quite, I'm not ready to go. I actually, I need to now connect this other disk drive to it. So in recovered server, I need to hit the settings. I need to go to the SCSI controller and I need to add a hard disk. Where when we did the backup, we did a new hard disk. We actually want to do an existing hard disk. So don't click new, I'm gonna hit browse and server backups is right there and I hit open. So this is ready to go and I hit OK. The disk is now attached to the new server. Now when I connect and do the installation, I can recover it from that disk. So I'm going to hit connect here for my server. I'm on the recovered server. Remember again, this window, the other original one needs to be off and we'll delete it when we're done because we actually need to get rid of the old hard disk too. So I'm going to hit start. I have to quickly boot from the CD. Remember this from the previous thing when it says whatever this is, it means I need to power it down. 
and I need to start it again, and I gotta hit a key. Hit any key, I'm hitting the space bar. So I hit a key, now we're loading files. So it's booting up off of the CD, or the DVD, the ISO. This is normal, we've seen this before of the setup. This part is the not normal. I'm not hitting install now, I'm over here in repair your computer. This is the one that a lot of people mess up on. So I need to repair my computer. And here I need to troubleshoot. This is kind of interesting little process here. And I need to do this system image recovery. So I'm gonna hit here. It's gonna browse and it better find it, okay? Here it says use the latest available system image. I'm just gonna note here, here's the latest one. This one was done, this is the 10 o'clock one. If I do select an image and hit next, it'll give me a list and it has here, this is doing the most recent one. I wonder if I can do the, there was multiple ones, but this is fine. It's interesting that it's not showing two. It usually shows two here, but I'm okay with this because I just want this version. This was the one I did as my uh, 10 o'clock thing. The funny thing is it says nine o'clock. Hang on. Oh, there's two of them right there. Oh, that's right. Geez, what am I doing? This is the date. And when I hit next, I can pick what time it was. Notice the time zone is wacky again here. This is the most recent one, the one at nine o'clock. I hit next here. It still does the most recent thing. Let me just go back, back. Let me see if I can go back. Anyway, notice here, we're still in the right one. So if I use the latest available, this is fine. And I am gonna use it, so I'm just gonna hit next. When I hit select, I just was showing off or trying to. So I'm gonna use the latest available, hit next. We're doing the same basic idea, format and partition. I can exclude stuff. I don't wanna deal with this right now. There's some kind of issues you can do if you have a too new of a server and the drivers aren't installed. You can do that here. This is something you hopefully don't have to deal with. We're about to install it from this and I hit finish. All disks will be restored, to be restored will be formatted and replaced. I do want to continue. This means my disk inside the VM, the main disk is going to be reformatted. And now we're going to go through the restoration process. Hopefully this doesn't take a few hours because I've done this before and it usually just takes a few minutes. So we're restoring disk C. Takes about as long to back up as it did, or to restore as it did to back up. I think this is, we're doing fine. All right, we're still waiting. I guess while I'm waiting, I'll just note the idea of having the multiple backups is helpful because there's times when, like if you got a ransomware attack, that you would need to restore from a backup before the ransomware attack happened. And so it's it ends up kind of being important that you can pick the exact time. So I guess I kind of brushed by that a little too glibly. But I am still going to stay here while this restores. And... I guess I'll be quiet for just a minute.
All right, now we want to restart. I'm going to hit restart now. By the way, this restores it completely as if it was in the original state. So for example, you if you've forgotten your password, you can't like reset your password this way. So here we are, we're back at the login screen and I'm just gonna walk through here. Again, if you weren't watching, I did discuss the idea that you might want to have multiple backups and be able to reference older backups if you've gotten a ransomware attack, because you you know you might need to like the current version of the server might be all encrypted files and we have to go back and find the unencrypted versions of them. All right, here we are. IIS is running, and I'm just going to verify really quickly that everything is basically there. So I'm going to open up my uh, Firefox here. And we're going to go, I guess I don't need to do that there. I can just do it over here. Let me just zip this out of the way a little bit. I'm going to pop over into this one because I want to make sure everything's running right. I'm going to go back into Edge here. A little bit updated Firefox on me. And I don't actually need this. I'm just going to close this out. Close that. I'm going to go back into here. Oops. Go in here. Raising retirement ages, I'm going to go to the 192.168.1.2, and then we're going to go. So remember, we had that test form on there. Let's just make sure it's there. And then we're also going to just double check here. I'm going to map this network drive. Test form isn't doing well enough. This was a John Doe. This was this password. Oops, if I can remember my password. I hit it OK. Oh, you know what? Now I just remembered. Ha <laughs> ha. The thing that this is doing is that when you reset the computer, it resets the networking. So the networking doesn't go back to the original thing. So I'm going back, I'm back on my Windows server here. I'm gonna right click here, go to the network and sharing center. Um, this is the error from the not able to access that. We're just gonna leave this over here. Here we are in the network and sharing center. Remember again, I right clicked here and said open network and sharing center. I'm gonna to go to ethernet two. I'm gonna hit the properties. We did this a little while back in one of our other exercises where we set this to a fixed IP address. Now, my new IP address is the old IP address of the other server. And it is 192.168.1.2. That's what I've been trying to connect to. And I do need a DNS server here, which is 192.168.1.1. That's my PFSense, by the way, it's right here, the DNS, and that's the gateway also. I'm gonna hit okay here and this, you see this error you get, we're in a Hyper-V network adapter. We have to remove this um, IP address from this other adapter. So I'm gonna hit yes. And what actually happens here is it takes a minute to free it up. I'm gonna hit properties again. I'm gonna hit properties again. And you'll notice here the default gateway disappeared. I do need to type that in. And so we need to make sure we reconfigure the networking and until we do that, this is not ready to go. So now let's see if this works. I'm gonna refresh this. Now we're wondering why it's not working. Let me double check one more thing. Sometimes the network, like the IP addresses just sort of get fried a little bit, which is kind of an interesting way to think about it. I'm going to open this network and sharing center one more time. We're going to hit the properties again. Did I hit that well enough? Okay, there it is. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So it does, it, I don't know, it's kind of like there's cobwebs in here, I guess. We have to clear out the cobwebs. All right, we're ready to go here. This is the other thing I did before. It's funny that it saved something, but that shouldn't be 
this is just normal. I don't need that to be my web browser. So that looks like it works. The test form is there. We need to double check that the share is there. So I've got this already in here, 192.168.1.2 backslash CIS. I'm gonna put in my John Doe because I have all these users and we're just gonna check that that works. And sure enough, this does. It's funny that's in behind, but there's our admin created this and the files are there. And so what we would say now is yes, indeed, our server is now back to where it was. So that looks good. And I'm gonna uh, stop the video right now because I think we've proved our point that we were able to recover this.